Here is everything Apple announced at its spring peak performance event. So Tim Cook took to the stage to start the show off with some updates around Apple TV Plus content, and also introduce a new partnership with Major League Baseball in which the streaming service will now carry two exclusive games for what Apple calls Friday Night Baseball. Moving on to the iPhone, we got new iPhone 13 and 13 Pro colors, just a simple green for the 13, and then what Apple calls Alpine Green for the 13 Pro. Sticking with iPhones, we expected this to happen, and Apple announced its next generation iPhone SE. The new iPhone SE features the same 4.7 inch display as the current model, but now offers the toughest glass in a smartphone on the front and back, the same as on the back of the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro. The device's new 12 megapixel camera system features computational photography, including support for deep fusion and smart HDR. Again, the new iPhone SE contains the same A15 Bionic chip as the the 13 and 13 Pro. With a 6-core CPU, the A15 Bionic means that the iPhone SE is 1.8 times faster than the iPhone 8. The 16-core neural engine aimed at machine learning tasks performs 15.8 trillion operations per second, making it 26 times faster than the iPhone 8. And the 4-core GPU delivers 2.2 times faster speeds than the iPhone 8. The new iPhone SE is available in two new colors, Midnight and Starlight, alongside Product Red. The iPhone SE starts at $429 this year, which is up from $399 on the 2020 model. Pre-orders begin on Friday with the first devices shipping on March 18th. And oh, I almost forgot, it does support 5G connectivity as well. Next up was the iPad Air, and this too kept the same design as the previous model, but the surprise here is that Apple is now including the M1 chip inside of these new iPad Air models. In terms of the M1's pure performance, the 8-core CPU delivers up to 60% faster performance, and the 8-core GPU delivers up to two times faster graphics performance compared to the previous generation iPad Air, according to Apple. It's available in a new array of colors. The iPad Air also features Apple's ultra-wide front camera with center stage for a more natural video conferencing experience, a USB-C port that's now two times faster with transfer speeds, and 5G on cellular models. The new iPad Air is priced at $599, which is the same as the previous model, and it comes in space gray, starlight, pink, purple, and a new blue color. The new iPad Air will be available to pre-order on Friday, March 11th, and will start shipping on March 18th. Apple then focused the rest of its attention over to the Mac and the latest addition to its Apple Silicon with the brand new M1 Ultra chip. Now, there's a lot of technical jargon that was thrown around at this event at an absolutely insane speed to follow, but just know that this thing is uh, super fast, like even faster than the already fast M1 Max fast. M1 Ultra consists of two M1 Max chips connected with die-to-die -die technology called Ultra Fusion. M1 Ultra has a 20-core CPU with 16 high-performance and four high-efficiency cores. M1 Ultra supports up to 128 gigs of unified memory, an increase from the 64-gig memory supported by the M1 Pro and M1 Max. In graphics, M1 Ultra has a 64-core GPU which offers eight times faster graphics than M1. M1 Ultra has a 32-core neural engine which can operate 22 trillion operations per second and has two separate media engines. So what computer gets to hold the new M1 Ultra first? Why the new Mac Studio, of course. This is the big beefy Mac Mini inspired machine that kind of just spurted up in last minute leaks yesterday and it looks glorious. Apple packed this thing with tons of connectivity like two USB-C ports on the front if you get the M1 Max configuration or that changes to two Thunderbolt ports for those who have the M1 Ultra and there's an SD card slot on the front. And I cannot stress enough just how amazing that little design choice is. I'm super happy about that. The back of the machine houses four more USB-C, two Type-A, 10 gig Ethernet, 3.5 millimeter high impedance headphone jack, and an HDMI slot. You also get Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5 built in as well. Another thing you'll notice with this design are all the little perforations on the back, as well as the perforated circular base to help with thermal management. The Studio can run off of the M1 Max and M1 Ultra, and the numbers that Apple tossed around at the event and in the press release is just mind-blowing. I'll leave it on screen here for a second so that you can pause to read it, but we'll be putting this machine up against the 16-inch MacBook Pro with M1 Max ASAP, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos on the upcoming products that Apple just announced. 
The M1 Max version of the Mac Studio starts at $19.99 and $39.99 for the M1 Ultra and can be ordered right now with orders shipping next Friday. Alongside the Mac Studio came a new studio display. The studio display features an all-screen design with narrow borders in an all-aluminum enclosure like the 24-inch iMac. The display can be tilted up to 30 degrees, but if you want to customize the display, you can choose between a more versatile and adjustable stand for an additional $400, and there's also an option for nano texture glass for an additional $300. I believe it's at no extra cost if you'd want to go with a vase amount instead, so you have these options at checkout if you want to do that. The screen itself features a 5K retina resolution with 14.7 million pixels. It also has an anti-reflective coating and True Tone technology. The studio display also contains the A13 Bionic chip to support its camera and audio system. That means it now has a 12 megapixel ultra-wide front-facing camera with center stage, the exact same that we just talked about with the iPad. With the six speaker setup on the bottom, the display contains four force canceling woofers that minimize distortion and two high performance tweeters featuring support for a spatial audio with Dolby Atmos. It also includes a three microphone array. The rear of the studio display features three USB-C ports and a Thunderbolt port to connect peripherals. The display can deliver 96 watts of power to a notebook and can even fast charge the 14-inch MacBook Pro. You can connect up to three studio displays to a single MacBook Pro if you want to. And the price for this display is at $1599, which is a little bit more than what I was expecting, but still a pretty great option considering that the LG Ultrafine was around the same price point. Uh, alongside the Mac Studio, the Studio Display is available to order today, and orders will begin to arrive on March 18th. And they joined the rest of our incredible Mac lineup with Apple Silicon, making our transition nearly complete with just one more product to go, Mac Pro. There are also some new color options for cases and Apple Watches available right now in the App Store, uh, along with some new keyboard and mouse color options. Actually, it's just black and silver. For those who are picking up a new Mac Studio and you want to get a cleaner look to your peripherals, those are available as well. And that's it. Please be sure to let us know what you think of everything that was announced at this event in the comments down below. And be sure to subscribe again so you don't miss any of the coverage that we will have on the iPhone SE, the iPad Air, the Mac Mini, and the, I'm sorry, the Mac Studio and the Studio Display. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.